Donc, euh, bon, je pense que nous pouvons commencer. Euh, D'abord, je vais me présenter. Je suis Mathilde rené dugo Bonjour à tous. Je suis directeur général adjointe d'Ingue Arthur. Et je suis accompagnée de Thomas, qui est un spécialiste de la sécurité euh, sur SAP grâce à la biométro. Hello, Thomas. Hi there. Euh, Thomas, c'est la personne qui va nous faire la présentation aujourd'hui. Il parle anglais. La, la présentation, pour votre confort, est sous-titrée en français. Et euh, donc, nous sommes là pour vous aider en cas de, de questions à pouvoir les traduire si nécessaire. Tout d'abord, je vais vous présenter rapidement Invertur. Donc, Invertur, c'est une société française qui a été créée en 2006 et qui est le spécialiste français des add-ons SAP. Toutes nos solutions s'articulent autour de trois axes que vous pouvez découvrir ici. Et euh, que si ça vous intéresse, euh, n'hésitez pas à nous contacter. Vous, auriez nos, vous aurez nos coordonnées à la fin de ce webinaire euh, pour parler d'autres sujets, éventuellement que celui de la biométrie. Nous en serions ravis. Euh, je vais laisser maintenant la parole à Thomas pour une présentation qui va durer environ 30 minutes, qui va vous présenter toutes les problématiques liées à l'accès euh, aux, aux violations d'accès à SAP et la manière de répondre à ces problématiques grâce à la biométrie. Euh, donc, nous nous retrouvons après ce, cette démonstration d'une trentaine de minutes pour une session de questions-réponses. Je vous invite dès à présent de, à poser vos questions dans l'onglet questions sur le côté. Et euh, nous ferons la, le point à la fin de cette présentation avec euh, Thomas. Ok, thank you Thomas, you can uh, go on now. Hey, good morning. I, we have a pre-recorded session for you and uh, have uh, French subtitles since we wanted to make sure that everybody can enjoy this Today's presentation in their presentation own language. Is about using biometrics to check ID. The presentation is about using biometrics to check ID in SAP for clear accountability, true compliance, fraud prevention, as well as corruption and collusion prevention. As this is an educational presentation, allow me to introduce our company first. Realtime was actually founded in 1986, 35 years ago by two former SAP managers, and we have some of the oldest ABAP experience available in the market. Uh, in early 2000s, a customer from the food industry had problems with people sharing passwords, and he brainstorm with our German CEO about a solution and the Siemens was our customer and they had this Siemens ID mouse which was the first biometric device that we plugged into a USB port and we built a custom application for true two-factor authentication including biometrics that was then first certified by SAP March 1st 2002 19 years ago. It still is the only certified biometric integration into SAP. And of course, it advanced a little bit. The mouse looks a little bit better now. And we even have a mouse with a palm vein scanner. And the technology itself, which is now installed in all continents, has evolved into a massive control and monitoring system that we would to discuss today. So let's talk about what triggered this development. Without a biometric ID check, you will never know who really logs onto SAP or who uses an administrator profile, who approves a purchase order in your system or issues a multi-million dollar wire transfer, or what stockbroker submits a buy or sell order in the system. So as a result, it is important that you do understand your risk. And that is, you need to accept it. The fact is that all organizations have fraud. Data doesn't leak itself. It's always people who leak the data. And the top three control weaknesses are all about a lack of internal controls. And as a result, the average fraud damage is 5% of company's annual revenue. And when we're talking about leaking data, we don't say that all your employees are leaking data. We are saying it just takes one bad person to cause major damages to your organization. So do you remember this man? He was a trusted insider. He was that bad apple, that one person that circumvented all controls possible. Well, you guessed right. We're talking about Jerome Carviel from Société Générale the one person that caused the largest fraud case in history. And he wasn't even an IT guy, but 
He worked in the back office, so he became very familiar with the procedures and how to circumvent them. Now people remember him as the guy that has the most debt in the world. But again, today's presentation is not about fraud cases. It is about what allowed that fraud to happen, and more important, how you can prevent it in the future. So as in most cases, and in the case of Jerome, it started with a borrowed or stolen password. By using Colleague's password, he could log on with their IDs and do trades in their names. He could issue high value trades, what he was not allowed to do, but there was no technology in place to prevent it. Managers were supposed to sign off on even higher value trades, but again, nothing stopped him and no alert notifications were available to Vern the supervisors. So as shown in the previous slides, rule-based password protected SAP security is very basic security. It's just the first level of defense. The first computer in 1963 was protected by a password and the inventor said back then that they were not secure. What has changed since the first computer almost 60 years ago? Well, pretty much everything except we're still logging on with that original password. So what do experts agree that is, this is not a good idea? Well, employees share passwords. Hackers hack SAP user credentials. Coworkers look over your shoulder. Secretaries have executive passwords. Users write the passwords on sticky notes. And administrators have access to absolutely everything. And anybody can take over an unlocked computer. So as discussed earlier, Jerome used credentials from other people for his fraudulent traits. So SAP was built for productivity and functionality, not for security. Maybe the black metal fence would stop an intruder if they drive an army, the tiny cube on wheels that French 14 year olds can drive. But if I come with my American SUV that weighs over 2.5 tons, that fence will not stop me. Any additional layer of advanced biolog security is necessary to stop today's intruders. So your SAP system stores and manages your organization's most vital information. When it comes to securing those information, there is always room for advanced security. So how do our customers deploy the advanced biolog security? Allow me to explain the concept by comparing it to a hotel room access. In a hotel, most employees have a key card to access any room, anytime. What do you do at night? Well, you close that swinging doorbell and you overwrite their existing access. And you control who you let in or who you allow to open that doorbell. Biolog does exactly the same in the SAP system. We allow you to place swinging doorbells anywhere in the SAP system. We place a biometric security checkpoint into a function, like for example, a generate button to issue a trade. The user needs to provide the ID to the system in order to execute. And as this function here is protecting a high value trade, the system is requesting even a palm vein authentication, which is even more sophisticated than fingerprint. And since the palm of Jerome is not authorized, the trade is declined. Very simple. But uh, there are many biometric ID check options for different use cases. Fingerprint is the most accepted option for all industries, since we are so used to it, we use it on my iPad or the iPhone or many other scenarios. Palm vein, we see mostly being used in financials or in scenarios where people share devices like on kiosks or shared computers, since they don't need to touch the actual device and therefore no germs are being spread. The NIMI band is a new integration that was a made for healthcare and the pharma industry. I call it biometrics for gloves. You put it on in the morning, put your finger on the built-in sensor to authenticate a Smith, and now you can wear gloves or even a hazmat suit and you tap it against the NFC reader to authenticate. Now, for customer verification, 
We combined it also with smart cards for the ultimate multi-factor authentication. And uh, for larger rollouts, we actually integrated with Windows Hello. So if you're already using Windows 10 and Windows Hello authentication, like a built-in swipe sensor on a laptop or an infrared camera, you can use all those methods to authenticate functions via BioLock and SAP. And then mostly for governments, we also implemented additional nationality and IP address checks uh, specifically for ITAR controls. So many companies already have EIM and compliance strategies in place. And they always ask us, like, what's the difference to BioLock? Well, very simple. If you compare the airport security check here to the SAP logon, everything that they do with EIM and single sign-on is before the security checkpoint or outside the secure area. Everything that we do with BioLock is after the security checkpoint or inside the SAP. So very simple, we mostly work with all other activities seamlessly together because you hand over to SAP and we take over from there. Now, staying with that example of the airport, maybe 30, 40 years ago, you could come to the counter, quickly show your driver's license, get a ticket and walk on a plane. That is not happening anymore. But this is exactly what the SAP log on it. It's a very basic security check that then allows you to go anywhere where really you shouldn't be going. So now at the airport, especially after 9-11, we have a very extensive security check where the person will first check your ID to make sure it's really you who is entering the secure area. But then they will do something else. They will actually put the ID on a scanner and make sure that you're not on a terrorist watch list or on a no-fly list, or perhaps if you're on TSA pre-check, which means I can go through the faster line, I don't even have to take my shoes off anymore. And this is exactly what we do with BioLock in SAP. We check ID and then we check allow list to add these extra levels to the original SAP logon. Now, the number one application for this function protection. You can protect any sensitive function and only invite trusted power users to execute the function. The second application is the logon protection. A few companies choose to protect the logon for all SAP users, mostly after they were hit with a compliance related fine. But generally, if you protect the functions, the logon is not that important. Application three is employee verification. All employees that don't even know that SAP exists because they work in factories or they drive a truck or they work in the field, but they use it for time and attendance, employee self-service, we use it in mines for medical checkup or even for equipment checkout to prove that they got that safety equipment. And last, we can use it for customer verification. Anything from banks to healthcare, we have actually built a cardless point of sale system where customers can check out at the store without even bringing their wallet. But uh, our most exciting installation is probably NSSA, the National Social Security Administration in Zimbabwe, where we issue social security benefits to customers based on a biometric and smart card authentication inside SAP. Let's talk why logon protection is so important. Well, very simple. Colleagues, consultants, spouses, hackers have many options to take over Mr. Smith's user ID. So we have seen everything, we call it shoulder surfing, where somebody simply looks over somebody's shoulder to see them type in their passwords. Then the hackers, they breach your network and then they install a password set and a sniffer or a key logging software. But generally it's easier just to look at the yellow sticky note where everybody writes down their passwords. Uh, we've also seen some recorded cases of uh, uh, drones with a high resolution camera flying up to a window and video recording you while you type in your password. That's a big uh, cool thing happening in New York right now. My favorite still is the, the backspace in the user field it actually saves your user ID. Now, if somebody accidentally types in a password in the morning, it is being saved. So click in the user field, hit backspace, 
and 50% chance you see a password matching a user ID and you just type it in and you are in. Uh, it works at many, many companies. So once you install the BioLock, the little window pops up, the second uh, factor authentication and said, just put your finger on. So with that alone, Jerome could not have accessed his colleague's user profile. And that becomes even more important when the company uses single sign-on, just because a guy logged onto Windows in the morning should not allow him to simply click on the corporate finance system and get in. But uh, we have identified hundreds of sensitive transactions over the years that our customers have implemented as they were identified as what we call high-risk, high-consequence areas. And this is from creating a vendor, which is the first step to commit fraud, to moving goods, issuing payments, entering invoices. My favorite, BP maintain a business partner where SAP has merged 30 sensitive transactions into one transaction. So imagine a bad guy gets access to that. They can do anything they want to do. Now, while this list uh, that we can provide to you will help you with planning, you might have completely different pain points. But it really is like going in a video store in the old days where there were tens of thousands of movies and they give you a list with 100 movies to focus on so you actually find a movie that you can watch for the night. Now, all standard and custom transactions can be protected with a simple configuration, but BioLock can protect much more. So we can, in HR, protect any of the hundreds of info types like bank details or basic pay uh, and lock them down. Uh, we have tens of thousands of tables in SAP that you can pick and choose what table you want to protect. And then, of course, we can protect high-value transactions. In this case, an outgoing transfer under 10,000 euros would not require any biometric verification, but once it exceeds that limit, we want to check the ID. And then, more important, we want to protect and execute or enter a button so we know which person actually finalizes the tasks. And we also see uh, people using it in save, print, or export buttons, like, for example, Snowden, the largest data breach in NSA history, could have easily been prevented with that technology as well. But really, you can protect anything in the ABAP system. So, what is number one protection level? That would be that uh, you cannot log on unless you're specifically invited. So what happens here if a user types in the password, it goes inside the SAP system where the BioLock is located in our own reserved namespace forward slash real time. And now the ID check is being activated. It's going back out. You put the finger on the sensor and by the way, we never store or transmit an image. We extract the minutia points from your finger, create a biometric reference template that that being transmitted to the SAP system and checked against the existing reference template. But now we activate step two, which is the deny list, the allow list, and now it comes back and the activity is either allowed or it is denied. The number two protection is the more important transaction protection. Any transaction can be protected in minutes. We have simple configuration. So you go to that the first table in the BioLock and you create a random function number, 477. This could be A99, it doesn't matter, it's just a reference. Then you select your inspection criteria, which could be fingerprint, palm vein, Windows Hello, the NIMI band, and in the future, if something new comes out, we will add this to the system. So this system is future proof for future technologies. And then of course we set the global check mark since we want to protect it for everybody in the system. And in most cases, we suggest to specifically invite the defined. And what that means, I will tell you in step three. Now, after we're done with step one, we go to the next table and we simply assign transaction F1110 or any other transaction to function 470. And now we are protected. But now everybody with SAP authorization and uh, biometric authorization will get in. 
And that might not be narrowed down enough. So we go to step three, and now we define that the function 470 can only be executed by the biometric ID of Mr. Smith. And now we can guarantee that Smith is the only person in the world that will ever be able to access the F1110 transaction. So protection number three, totally granular control to the lowest level. Well, your headquarters has a front door that might be locked at night and your personal office is probably locked as well. But for your most sensitive data, you probably do what I do. You lock your desk and I have the key right here there in my desk. And that is kind of the granular controls that we allow you uh, to do in, in BioLock with uh, SAP here. Now, it's more important to check ID when the trade is finalized as opposed to when the trade function is accessed. While some customers prefer to protect just the access to a transaction like an F1110, for example, other configure the ID check for the execution of the payment run on the function level for A, the ultimate protection, but B, the full accountability. So first, in order to do this, we need to create another random function number to define the protection. In this case, we use the number 471, and we do the same we did before, check the palm vein or fingerprint, do the global check mark. But now we need to consult with an ABAP programmer that will add a BioLock checkpoint, our swinging doorbell, via ABAP code into a user exit or field exit, and then link it to the previously configured function number, the 471. And if there are any ABAP experts in the audience, you can see there is a little piece of code which makes everybody happy. But for the auditors and the business people, it is very important to see the log file that actually shows now Thomas Smith executed the payment run just after 5.30 p.m. on October 16th. And the protection number four allows us to reinforce dual controls Finally, with technology, we allow you to, take, to create a dual confirmation group and add as many users as you want. Now, it takes at least two invited users from the group to execute the functions. It's basically like two signatures on a check inside the SAP system. And both users will be uniquely identified and logged in the log file for accountability. So, Jerome had trading limits that needed to be signed off by a supervisor, but there was no technology in place to enforce it. BioLock could have requested the supervisor sign off to execute the high value trade. So the last protection is around reinforcing segregation of duties. Companies use GRC tools to prevent that one employee has permission for conflicting business processes, but any fraudster can easily find a way to circumvent those measures by logging in as a coworker to create, execute, or approve a function that his or her profile did not have the permission to execute. So in this case, Jerome could have looked over Werner's shoulder here to approve his purchase order or to approve the trade and could have circumvented the SODs that were set up based on the SAP user profile. And then he could have went in and issue a payment as Thomas, since there was no biometric uh, technology in place. So the biometric reauthentication will reinforce true segregation of duties. It will also establish full accountability in smaller subsidiaries where you have not enough employees to enforce SODs the right way from the begin with. So what's the main reason why companies deploy our technology? Well. Before BioLock, there were many users that theoretically had unauthorized access to a sensitive function. Users share passwords, especially before they go on vacation. A secretary has access to multiple executive profiles. Administrators have access to basically everything. And with COVID, the CFO is working from home and he's stepping outside to take the dog for a walk. Now everybody walking in his kitchen has access to your corporate finance system. So the main advantage of BioLock is that you can guarantee the CEO or auditors, of course, that only Smiths can have access to that function. An equally important advantage is that you can show it to them. 
the SAP log file only shows the SAP user ID. In many cases, something totally unrelated to the user's name, like KV3792. The SAP ID, I always refer to it to NASA spacesuit. It, it really is a closed suit. And if you have ever seen a James Bond movie, he escapes out of the most critical situation in a spacesuit that might say Smith on it, but it doesn't mean that it's actually Smith walking out of the building. And in most cases, it's James Bond. And that's the same with the SAP ID. You really don't know who you're dealing with. So looking at our log file, you see on the left the SAP user ID, but then right next to it, you see the biometric ID. And more important, you see the full first name and last name. And then you see the protection status and you see the controlled SAP activity. And what you see in the first line is actually all you ever want to see is that Smith signed in as Smith and was accepted and everything is green and everything is good. But already in the second line, you see how John Carviel was logged in as Smith. He was stupid enough to actually put the finger on the sensor, so he was uniquely identified with biometrics, but he was still not authorized for the function. In fact, at this point, we would have triggered an email notification that you see in the right upper corner and sent it to the entire security team, telling them that a person was just uh, identified doing something that they were not supposed to do, we uniquely identified the person, we rejected the attempt, and we are now letting security personnel know instantly that there is uh, some potential fraud is in progress right now. Now the next line shows another scenario, Amanda Jones. She's locked in as Jones. She has full SAP access, but she's still not authorized. Can you guess why? Well, very simple. We have not specifically put her on the allow list in Biolog to execute the function 471 to execute the payment run. Therefore, she is not authorized. The next line shows our hacker. He came randomly into the system, breached the firewall, ran his uh, a key logger, and identified the, the password for Matthias. He logged in, but he is immediately rejected because he doesn't even have a biometric device plugged in, nor does he have a biometric reference template. So we can't tell you who the guy is, but for sure we didn't let him in. And then the total opposite in the last line, you see Bongani, who is logged in as DDIC. DDIC is the god of the administrators. The DDIC profile can do everything. And you see that Bongani, even he is identified, is not authorized to execute the payment run as the administrator profile because Biolog overrides. So the icing on the cake is there is really no training required for your employees. Right now they type in F1110 and the transaction pops up. The only difference will be with Biolog, their little window will request the fingerprint, the palm main, the NIMI band to put on the sensor. And after that's done, it goes right back to where they were before. Or, of course, if they're getting rejected for whatever reason, they need to talk to the supervisor or the technical team to see what's going on. But even the installation and deployment of Biolog can be done in a few days. And anybody with SAP background will understand the concept very, very quickly. There are many companies and governments around the world using Biolog. Uh, Al Asil, an NG subsidiary in Bahrain, implemented Biolog a few years back and uh, you can click on the case study after we provide the presentation uh, later on and download this and all the other case studies. But uh, one that I'd like to point out is the oldest central bank in England. Uh, they have been using Biolog for far over 10 years and it was uh, very interesting because we actually helped SAP to win this deal. They issued an RFP back in 2005 and they requested granular biometric controls in that RFP, and everybody in England were shaking their head. And Diagonal Consulting, part of the Morsi Group, uh, they know us from trade shows, and they said, oh, this is easy. We use uh, SAP and we use Biolog, and we can do everything that you want to do. So we presented SAP and Biolog to them, and they purchased SAP and Biolog on one purchase order. 
So this was a big win. And after this, we got a lot of attention from SAP. And we still have a very high level SAP contacts that are all very favorable about the dialogue, including in France. So another example is retail in Germany. Uh, they are actually using biometrics inside SAP to identify cashiers when they create sales orders. And that allows those hundreds of cashiers for very fast user switching and full accountability as the sales receipt number is actually matched to the cashier directly in the log file. And there are many, many other use cases that we can share on request or we'll discuss with you in a follow-up presentation. Now to close the story, let me reiterate how the largest financial fraud loss ever could have been prevented. Jerome would not have been able to log on with his colleagues' accounts due to our true two-factor authentication, including biometrics. The trade function would have checked his ID again when accessing the trade transaction. And again, when trying to execute the trade, the ID check would have identified the person as, again. Most important, the dual controls would have requested the supervisor to reconfirm the high value trade. And last, he would not have been able to circumvent any segregation of duties. So what can you do to protect your SAP system the right way? Well, please engage with the Invertour team for any follow-up questions. Share some highlights of today's presentation with other team members and business owners internally, and consider the test drive. What's better than getting a nice Citroen for 30 days and drive around and see how you like it? You can always test Biolog with our own data in your sandbox and see how well it really works. The Invertour teams would be glad to share our pilot program with you. Thank you very much for your time. Ok, thank you Thomas, uh, merci beaucoup. Uh, je me rends compte, uh, Manon me dit qu'on uh, n'arrive pas à faire afficher les questions qui arrivent, donc uh, uh, elle me les a envoyées par SMS, ça je vais vous les poser. Donc, uh, uh, les premières questions qu'on a eues, c'est concernant les modules sur lesquels ce système peut être uh, uh, installé. So Thomas, uh, in which module we can install by um, Biolock? We can hear you, uh, Thomas. Oh. Thank you. Uh, Biolog can be installed in, in really any SAP system that is ABAP-based. So it's going across all modules and all functions uh, as long as the, the background is the ABAP system. OK. So you have understood, it can be installed on any module, any system, at the moment that it's based on ABAP. Uh, une autre question concerne l'implémentation. Uh, comment implémentons Biolog? So, uh, Thomas, how, is, how can we do the implementation? How long it is? Uh, generally, a small installation can be done in a couple days. So, it's not that it takes uh, weeks and months like other SAP projects. We really just provide the SAP transports with a basis administrator will transport into the system and then it's uh, just a matter of a, a day or two or three to start the configuration depending on how deep the, the companies want to dive and then enroll a couple users and get them up and running with the biometric devices. Donc vous l'avez compris également, euh, donc ça se fait en, en un jour ou deux, pas plusieurs semaines comme d'autres projets SAP peuvent exister euh, et donc il s'agit juste de on, en, euh, on vous recevez une, euh, une connexion via une installation euh, par, par mail, bien sûr, et vous, vous pouvez l'installer. Et ensuite, c'est juste de la configuration qui peut prendre un jour ou deux selon la profondeur de ce que vous voulez installer, selon euh, la complexité de votre euh, demande. Euh, thank you, Thomas. I have another question, just to check my SMS. Euh, euh, y a-t-il certains périphériques que vous recommandez par rapport à d'autres euh, concernant par exemple la, la gestion d'entrepôt. Uh, have, have you any device you can recommend compared to another one, especially for warehouse management? Well, we have, uh, like we said in the presentation, we are compatible with uh, many biometric devices, but uh, one of our favorite actually is the, the Secugen device, which is a high quality device for relatively low cost 
pricing. And it is also globally available at the very high quantities. And we're currently implementing this with a new client. So customers can actually customize the client with their own logos and their own language, like French, for example. Uh, OK, thank you. Uh, et uh, je, re, je reçu aussi un, un, un commentaire uh, d'un collègue de, de Thomas qui est également connecté, qui me dit que uh, il euh, n'y a pas besoin d'une configuration spécifique pour euh, un différent device, ça se fait avec la même configuration. So it's the same configuration for all devices. That's right, Thomas Yes. Voilà. Et enfin, une dernière question que je viens de recevoir. Euh, euh, vous parlez d'un programme d'essai. Euh, comment ça marche et euh, quelle est force de la demande pour avoir, pour avoir un, pour être en place un pilote et le faire fonctionner? Uh, so, what about the trial version and how can we implement it? And what is the effort concerning this trial, Thomas? Well, very simple. If there are customers interested in trying it in their program, we can propose a trial project and uh, we'll need to gather some information about their systems and uh, define a, a project manager. And then it's just a matter of providing the transports and uh, procuring some biometric devices that are compatible with the solution and then uh, get them up and running in the sandbox. Voilà, donc vous avez compris, vous pouvez le faire fonctionner dans votre, dans votre bac à sable, tout simplement. Euh, donc euh, voilà, je pense que nous sommes arrivés au bout de cette présentation. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, it's been, uh, Uh, we have done the, I just wanted all the questions you have uh, right now. Si vous avez d'autres questions, n'hésitez pas à nous les envoyer à l'adresse internet que vous voyez là ou à nous contacter par téléphone. Nous sommes à votre disposition. J'espère que cette présentation vous a intéressé et que vous nous contacterez, bien sûr. Merci, au revoir. Thank you.